So I'm stood in what I call the West Wing of the Barge House. It's a slightly strange space, um, and it was a space that when I walked through it that I had no idea what to do with. It's not a conventional gallery space. Um, it's not, we thought about using it as a, um, as a resources room. Um, it's got strange laminate flooring, and it's not really the sort of space that you can really imagine art working in. Um, and one of the other things that I was quite anxious to do was to disrupt um, a straightforward survey show and have something that was a little bit um, unusual and um, not easy to define. At which point I should introduce you to Tom Polo, who um, was the person that I thought might be able to do something with this space. And it was very difficult to have conversations via Skype and say, well, this is this space and you might be able to do something with it. But I know Tom was open to this idea. Um, I think even he's found Flora a bit of a challenge. But as you can see from the space, things are happening here. And I wouldn't call it an installation, I wouldn't call it a finished work of art. Tom intends to come back and work from time to time as this show progresses and things will develop and change in ways that he hasn't fully explained to me. <laughs> so Tom, why don't you talk a little bit first about your practice and then a little bit about what you intend to do here. Sure. So my recent practice deals with uh, notions of painting and how we can look at painting in extended acts. So that's painting as performance, painting as installation, uh, as well as kind of uh, works on walls as well. So within these works, I'm kind of looking at um, portraiture or again, uh, acts of portraiture. They are imagined people. They're also kind of images of me, perhaps. Um, uh, in order to create the paintings, uh, it's about uh, creating something out of an act of immediacy. So like one mark becomes two, becomes a face, becomes shapes, to try and find a portrait out of, I guess. Um, and so for this show, knowing that I'd be in a space that was quite, um, quite, quite challenging, quite different, I really wanted to push something that I was doing earlier in the year which involved um, the, either the accumulation of mark or gesture in a space um, through the addition or removal of objects or painting on walls or painting in space um, to really challenge the notion or that, that kind of fixation between studio and gallery and the idea of completion or what we deem to be a desired outcome. So in, in this way, um, during the three weeks, I will be here from time to time, performing in this role as this character, um, trying to kind of cheekily uh, talk about what it is to perform, if performance needs to be something that has a start and an end, if it's something that is scheduled, if it can be just me walking into the space, changing one thing and walking out of the space, um, challenging, yeah, what we know about, uh, I guess, painting also, and how we can think about when is something done, uh, I want people to walk into this space also and wonder if something has happened or if there's that expectation that something is looming also. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the banner works as well and the text works, um, to some extent, do they operate separately from the portraits? Mm -hmm. Do the portraits interact with the text in a, in a, in a particular way or is, is that a, to some extent left in the viewer's imagination? So the banners um, use text that are either uh, things from like conversations I've had or uh, uh, motivational slogans. Uh, so I'm very interested in that, that kind of genre of self-help. Um, and I see the paintings or the figurative portraits as being almost like the audience, both in the gallery space, perhaps the audience that might attend one of these like um, lectures. So that they themselves uh, blur the line between who is looking and who is being looked at. So. Um, as you can see, they are uh, paintings or figurative paintings on uh, sticks. So I kind of I re refer to them as um, uh, like personal protest cards. So not of they they're not kind of protesting um, something kind of political or social. They're rather they are kind of talking about something personal. Um, but they're also they kind of fall into that idea of a mask to all the masquerade. So um, by you know using them. To cover yourself up, are they in fact actually revealing a true portrait of mm -hmm. anxiety, or as opposed to something that is supposed to um, look flawless? Or yes. yeah. 
And you, you, I mean, it is an odd space and it's a challenging space, but even on the four or five days that I've been walking around, the space has changed subtly each mm -hmm. day, even to the point that you've used the existing um, blinds, some of them yeah, yeah. raised to the top, some of them raised to the bottom. And I know that sort of scavenging, recycling is also important to your practice. Yeah, so I will often come into a space, um, and I, I did this actually last year when I was in London, for my show, I, I came to the space and used materials that were found on site. I was, I'm, I'm interested in um, that direct relationship between uh, what is able to be achieved and kind of um, if that's uh, by you know picking up some wood that's around the space or using a sign that's found outside um, or, or in this case using the blinds and kind of playing with, with the levels of the way that they're working and um, how that kind of fits into the composition of the whole space also. Um, but it kind of creates this feeling of, of yeah, is this a, like a for hire space of a of a, um, a, a a local community group or something who have come and have placed down their protest cards or are about to meet for next week's meeting or something like that too. So there is that that level of of questioning, and um, I think that's really integral to it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.